G'day everyone. Today I'm going to teach you all about unit micro and encirclements in Hearts of Iron 4. I'm going to teach you what it is and how you should do it. And once you pick up this valuable skill, you're going to notice a massive jump in your gameplay. So let's get into it. Just real quick though, if you like this, you can help me out by liking the video and subscribing for new ones. I'll also have all the timestamps down below and a bonus tip at the end. So stick around for that. So what is unit micro? It's when you precisely command your troops on the front line manually rather than using a front line and an offensive order. So the reason that you'd want to be doing this is that you can command your divisions to attack vulnerable areas and push into gaps far better than the AI can when it's on an offensive plan. And not only that, you can do so in a concentrated area rather than having your divisions attack across the entire front line. Doing so correctly and cleverly will lead to breakthroughs and encirclements, and you making more progress overall with your advances for less casualties and equipment loss. Now, how do you do it? Well, the key concept is that you select one or more divisions, and then you just right click on an enemy province, and they will go ahead and attack. Your men are now going to force attack that tile, uh, regardless of any other orders that they might have. It seems pretty straightforward, but there are some key concepts that go along with that, which you need to understand, as well as a bunch of hot keys that will make your life a whole bunch easier. The first thing you need to learn about are encirclements. This is where you cut off enemy divisions from the rest of their lines, denying them supply and a means of escape. So when you defeat encircled divisions in a battle, they don't retreat like they usually would. They've got nowhere to go, so they're overrun and destroyed, permanently removing them from the game. It goes without saying that this is one of the best ways of gaining an advantage over your enemies, and by microing your units to create encirclements, you're exploiting the poor AI in the game. Alright, let me show you how it's done. A great example here is the Danzig Pocket. Uh, you can see that we have quite a lot of divisions around here, but they have very few defending, and this is also a narrow corridor. So to cut off the enemy divisions in Danzig, we only really need to take these two tiles. On the eastern side here, we're just going to select these five divisions and then right click on this province. Now, if we unpause, we're going to let the battle run. We should take that one pretty easily. Okay, so we've won the battle. Uh, we've taken this province and there's still just one more tile that we need here. We have run into a problem though. You can see that we've got this province here is currently empty. We don't have any divisions in there and we can see some of the Polish divisions are actually moving down to cut us off and encircle us. We do have this division here, which is moving across to reinforce. Um, so what I should have done before, instead of attacking with all five of these divisions, I should have attacked with three or four of them and left one behind to protect that tile. It's all good though. As I said, we have this division over here that's moving in to fill that gap. Um, but what we need to do to stop the enemy from beating us there is I'm going to teach you about pinning enemy divisions. The idea behind pinning is that while a unit is under attack, they can't move. So if we actually take these divisions here and then right click on this province, we're going to engage them and that then stops them from being able to move. That's going to give our division over here the opportunity to move in and fill that gap. Just like that. Now, what we could have done as well, just to cover all of our bases, is to take one of these divisions. Uh, by the way, if you've got a stack of five divisions here and you only want to select one of them, just click on it one time. It'll bring up basically like a menu, and then you can just select one. Or, for example, you can hold uh, left control and click, sorry, you can hold uh, shift, sorry, and deselect any ones that you don't want to uh, use. But yeah, basically, we'll just select one of these divisions, write it click here, we'll select this one and right click there. That would basically pin those two divisions as well to stop them moving into this province that was empty before. Now that we have taken that tile though, we've reinforced this province, we want our divisions to stop attacking. So the easiest way to do that is with the H hotkey for halt. Well, I'm not 100% sure that it actually is for halt, but that's what I'm going to say it's for. So basically just select any of your divisions here, press the H hotkey and they'll stop whatever they're doing, whether that's moving or attacking. H doesn't unassign them from their frontline order either, so it's a real handy way of stopping your units like shuffling or attacking if they're starting to do things you don't want them to do. Uh, now for this final province over here to complete the encirclement, we can actually attack from multiple tiles, which will give us a bonus and more divisions in the combat uh, in the battle due to combat width. So if you click on this province, it'll give you the yellow outline. You can actually see these two provinces and this one by a tiny bit all connect to it, so we can attack from all three. Now, just to make sure that we don't have that risk of being encircled again, I'm going to show you how to force attack with 
these ones and then support attack using other divisions. So to support attack, what you want to do is have that battle get started. Uh, basically to support attack means that your divisions are going to join a battle, but they're not going to move to that province once the battle's won. So to do so, basically you want to select the ones you want to uh, support attack, hold left control, and then right click on the attack bubble. So we're going to do that for these divisions up here as well. You'll see the blue arrows pop up. So the red arrow means that that division will occupy that province once the battle's won. The blue arrow just means they're supporting. So now if we let this run, uh, you can see here that the enemy is actually trying to bring some divisions over to reinforce. And to give ourselves the best chance of winning, we want to prevent that from happening. So what we're going to do is just select a couple of these divisions to pin this one. Uh, just for good measure, we'll take one of these divisions and pin this province. And just to make sure these guys don't try to come down, we'll use these two divisions to pin them as well. So now you can see we've actually got all these other battles happening around, and there's no route of reinforcement to this province here that we want to take. And we will just very quickly occupy that. And congratulations, you have got your first encirclement here. Now that you've got your first encirclement, it's important to know why this is a good thing, apart from just destroying these divisions. So in Hearts of Iron, supply always runs from a country's capital. So for us, it's obviously uh, Berlin here. Whoops, lost where Berlin is. Uh, for the Polish, it's Warsaw. So these divisions don't actually have a route of supply from their capital, despite them being on a port. So there are two ways you can go about it. You can wait for these divisions. You can stop attacking and just wait for these divisions to lose their supply and thus deorg. So you can already see these divisions are starting to lose it a little bit. Or if you're impatient like me, just select all the divisions surrounding and then right click there to destroy them. We have just taken out all those divisions. So any divisions, as I said at the start, any divisions that are destroyed via an encirclement are permanently gone and Poland would need to train new divisions to replace them. Now, I just used my standard infantry divisions to do that encirclement um, and there's certainly times that that will work fine, but generally you're going to want to use attacking divisions, whether that's uh, armor like this army group or special forces or something along those lines. Armor especially, or mobile divisions in general, are really great for making uh, making breaks and breakthroughs in the enemy lines and then pushing through and exploiting it. So we'll just demonstrate here. Uh, firstly, there's a couple of things that I'm going to do as well, which I want you to pay attention to. So firstly, I've got an attack order drawn, but I'm not going to activate it. The reason that I do that is because I still get the planning bonus in the battles, even if the battle plan is not activated. So for example, if I just right click an attack and then we pause, you can actually see our attack stat here. We're getting a 39% bonus from having the planning bonus built up. Uh, and that's without us even activating the order. Uh, on a side note here, you used to be able to draw the attack order and then unassign your divisions using this and still get the attack bonus uh, or the planning bonus, sorry. Um, it is built up here, but that will actually decline over time. That strategy used to work, but uh, sadly has been patched. The other thing that I'm gonna be doing is holding shift and right clicking to queue up multiple orders and then using the S hotkey to split my selection of divisions so I don't get overextended. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is right click here to attack this tile, uh, which I already did, there was an error there. Then I'm going to hold left shift and right click on the next province along, which is currently undefended. Uh, just so our infantry move in and follow us up, I'm gonna select these divisions and right click here. Then going back to our armor group, we can see that they're moving through to this province. So what I'm then going to do is you can either click this button up here or S to select half of them. Then I'm going to hold shift again and right click to the next province along. I'll press S to split my selection and then we'll right click to attack this province up here. So basically what that's doing is every time I advance, I'm leaving some of my divisions behind. So I don't just get overextended and encircled myself. So now let's just click play and see how we go with this attack. Okay, so straight away we can see that some of these divisions are starting to move around. Uh, just so these divisions don't move over and reinforce this one, we're going to just choose these. Select these divisions and attack them to pin those there. We can see that this division here is also trying to move away, so we'll just pin them. 
um, that basically is how we're going to do it. Now, the polish lines are starting to shuffle around a little bit more and move. So what we can actually do is activate our infantry attack order. Basically, our infantry are going to attack along pretty much the whole front and they'll do a pretty average job of pitting most of these divisions. Like, obviously, you can't micro the entire front line. That's why it's called micro. So we'll just activate that and then that will give us the opportunity to go along and attack, finish that encirclement off without worrying uh, about those divisions escaping. And there we go. So even though I'm using the frontline order here, one thing you can do is also uh, just move these front lines uh, further up to like follow your attack. Just that way your divisions won't run back, you know, to your main front line. Uh, but now we've got this big encirclement here. What I'm going to do is take my offensive uh, group and I'm going to put them on a frontline order. Okay, it's going to be weird today. We're going to put them on a frontline order uh, at the shortest point, basically, between the two front lines. And what that means is we're going to have our strongest divisions stopping the Polish from trying to relink up their encircled troops and making all of that effort for nothing. Then just basically draw a offensive order and activate it, or you can just right click uh, and push through and encircle all of these guys and, and take them out. And that will basically take care of itself. Uh, what we're also gonna do is we're going to take these divisions that are just sort of sitting around and push into these undefended tiles. So not only is that gonna give us freebies, um, but you're also like extending out your front lines a bit as well. So uh, I know we've basically taken over much of the encirclement, but before when we did our long narrow push, you kind of want to avoid only being like one province wide at your narrowest point. That just gives the enemy an opportunity to attack back and cut you off and encircle you. So you kind of want to avoid that if you can. Uh, also, don't be afraid to keep pausing over and over. like. As you're getting used to the concept of it, sometimes it's easier just to pause the game, uh, queue up some of the orders for your tanks or, you know, your divisions that are pushing up. Like, for example, move this guy up here to stop us getting cut off. Uh, even playing on, like, one or two speed can be really good when you're doing these, like, micro-intense uh, attacks. So, yeah, don't, don't feel bad about doing that. It's completely natural while you're learning. So here you can see we've basically just taken out all of these units. Our offensive line's gotten a little bit messy right now. That will happen. Um, but yeah, so we've taken out all those encircled units. That's basically 250,000 Polish troops gone at the cost of 10,000 of our own. That's not really something that you can get from just doing offensive lines. So uh, yeah, I hope you sort of see the value of doing like micro, like unit micro pushes. Even here, for example, you can keep doing this over and over. Like right here, we can move our uh, like tank divisions across. Again, you want to put that front line down to give us the planning bonus. Um, what I'm going to do is... So one little trick as well, when you've got divisions that are still moving to the front line, but you want to start getting these units going, you can still hold left shift and have them uh, sort of start to push up. Like you can queue up those orders. Once they get to the point that they're heading to, then they'll move and continue their attack. We're also going to just have half of these units and we'll go for the old double encirclement. Uh, so yeah, and we'll just let them run their course. Even again here, right, for example, we're attacking this province from this side with these divisions. What you want to do is attack a province from as many sides as possible. So you get a, uh, a bonus for attacking from multiple directions, um, which is, yeah, I'm not sure where it shows up there. But in any case, you get a bonus for it. Uh, also, we've got a free province here. So just always keep moving in and taking that territory. Again, try not to overextend yourself. Like right now, they've left Krakow free. So yeah, that's basically how you want to be doing this. Another thing to note is you can use your offensive orders. Like for example, we'll have our front line here for our tank divisions and we'll actually activate it. So they'll attack on their own. Um, you can do that in conjunction with uh, microing your divisions. So like, for example, we've got uh, these couple of divisions here. Once we can get them to push through and just keep exploiting these gaps. So like, honestly, it's uh, something I do quite commonly, especially against the weaker divisions. Like you can see here, because these divisions are so fast, like their speed is so quick, we can just zoom up and around here. At this point, the Polish don't really have that many divisions. 
So yeah, you can just keep running around and there we go, we've capitulated them. So Poland's gone for the cost of 20,000 men. Uh, 20,000 men to ourselves and 300,000 to the Polish. So that is pretty powerful. Also, it's uh, worth noting that if you're planning on doing this strategy in multiplayer games, uh, just be very careful. Like human players will do this back. Uh, the AI won't, obviously. Um, so you can fall into the trap of forgetting that you're playing against competent people. Like I know I've done that, but I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to be a multiplayer expert. I'm certainly not. Uh, the way I've explained it should get you through your single player career just fine. Another thing to remember is to utilize your air force. So you want to have any of your bombers and CAS active over the regions you're attacking in um, and make sure you've got fighter coverage. So honestly, I've said it once and I'll say it again, having green air and that uh, close air support can be the difference between a win and a loss in this game. Alrighty, so that's pretty much everything that you need to know about Unit Micro in Hearts of Iron. Just remember to practice it and find what works for you. Try out different things, and if there's anything that you do that you think might help other new players, just let us know in the comments. Um, also, if you've stuck out till the end, thank you. And now it's time for the bonus tip. So I'm sure you're all aware of how to do a Field Marshal order, but did you know that you can have Field Marshal orders and General orders at the same time? So what you want to do is, like for example, we've got our army assigned here on the Maginot. Make sure your army order is assigned first. And then if we want these other three army groups here to be on the front line with Netherlands, just go ahead and draw your field marshal order as usual. And then all of these divisions will move over and then your troops on the Maginot will remain. So this can be really good if you want to take advantage of that field marshal's bonus for that army group uh, without having to like sort of separate them or do any weird stuff with fallback lines. Now, if you decide that 72 divisions for the Netherlands is a bit of overkill and you want to move one of these away to Denmark, for example, all you need to do is just select the army that you want to move away, create a general frontline order as you usually would, and then just hold left clicked, uh, sorry, hold left control and left click onto that uh, order. And then those troops will pull themselves away from the front line to the new line. Uh, they're not gonna mess up your field marshal order. You'll still have these two army groups there as well as this guy down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and entertaining. And if you did, please consider liking and subscribing to see when I post new videos. I also stream on Twitch. So if you want, come over and check me out there and I will see you guys in the next one.